Hello, I'm Liz Zorab and this is By The Farm. Today I'm going to show you how to take cuttings so that you can have more fruit plants for free. This is one of my favourite uh, black currant bushes. Uh, it's a variety called Big Ben. Uh, it fruits nice and early uh, but with really big, big, very juicy and tasty black currants. Uh, some of them <laughs> the size of a marble so I definitely uh, would like some more of these. Uh, so it's very simple, uh, what I want to do is take cuttings of wood that uh, isn't very green at the top, um, but also uh, isn't the brown hard old wood uh, from last year. And I'm going to take a piece that's about 10 to 12 inches long, snip it off of my secateurs. Then I'm going to gently run my hand down it and remove the lower leaves. You can put these on the compost heap um, or as I'm doing, uh, I'm adding them to the floor to uh, become compost and I'm stripping them down until it's just a couple of leaves at the top. And then the next thing I'm doing is very rapidly uh, popping them into a plastic bag so that they don't lose any more moisture uh, than necessary. So straight into a big bag. And I'm gonna take half a dozen of these. And the reason for taking uh, all those leaves off uh, and just leaving a couple at the top is the couple at the top uh, will photosynthesize so that's no problem uh, but an awful lot of water will be lost uh, through transpiration from all these other leaves um, and the ones that are under the soil well they would just rot and then that would pose a risk of infection uh, so they only need a couple of leaves at the top and that will do them clever huh and next I'm going to fill this pot, uh, this particular one is a 10 inch but it doesn't really matter what size you use, I'm going to fill this pot with compost. This is a store-bought uh, multi-purpose compost uh, based on coir and I'm also going to add in a handful of soil from the raised beds uh, because that will add uh, a few microbes into the soil there we go, there's my uh, pot with compost in it uh, and a couple of handfuls uh, of soil from a raised bed. So I'm just knocking it against the floor uh, which will help the compost settle a bit and reduce the number of air gaps in there. I also have uh, some organic rooting powder but it really doesn't matter whether you use this or not. Uh, last year I didn't use it uh, and I had a hundred percent success rate with my current cuttings. Now um, I haven't chosen this particular brand for any reason uh, other than it's an organic one. So I've taken one cutting out of the bag, pop it into the hormone rooting powder and as you can see, uh, it's just a very fine coating on it. It's not big clumps. It doesn't need to be uh, in big lumpy clumps. Uh, just this very fine covering will do. I've used this uh, just to make a start a little hole, but you don't need to. You can just push it straight down into the soil. Near the edge. I'm just firming the compost a little bit around the top. And then I'll repeat the process uh, all around the edge of the pot.
because I took uh, seven cuttings I'm popping one right in the middle as well I wouldn't normally put one in the middle I would just leave them around the edges so I'm not pushing down hard I'm just letting the soil make a bit of contact with the with the cutting and there we go next thing of course to label them you can put uh, a label in the top or as I've done uh, popped it on the side and uh, no doubt this will fade over the winter but uh, it will it will help me distinguish one from the other so the next thing to do is pop that in a quiet corner somewhere where it will get rained on and somewhere where you will remember to water it uh, if we have a long dry spell and in a few months time uh, you should see roots popping out the bottom of the pot like this um, and these are some white currants that I took this time last year. Now they are quite pale uh, in colour because uh, there's no nutrients left in this compost uh, and they really, really need to get into the ground. Uh, so one of my jobs for this week uh, is to find exactly where I want these to go and get them planted. So I've just taken one out of the pot to show you. And there we go, uh, lots of lovely roots. So this is where I cut it, uh, popped it into the soil last this time last year um, and uh, all these lovely roots particularly uh, these little fibrous roots all going to help this plant grow now obviously uh, now I've pulled it out of the pot uh, I need to get this into the ground very quickly if you're enjoying this video uh, please give it a thumbs up uh, or leave a comment or both and if you haven't done so already uh, please consider subscribing to the channel and this is one of my favorite red currant bushes uh, and I'm going to do pretty much the same thing take the cuttings uh, but this time rather than putting them in soil uh, I'm going to put them on the kitchen windowsill in a glass of water. I've done this method quite successfully uh, with with soft cuttings uh, so ones taken in the summer um, but not uh, with a semi ripe cutting which is when uh, when the stem uh, is just starting to go brown but hasn't actually gone woody yet Uh, so safety first, uh, I've locked the secateurs so that they can't damage me. I'll take the lower leaves off the cuttings and straight into the bag. So there we are, let's get them inside. The advantage to uh, doing some of these inside is that the temperature uh, over the winter is usually slightly warmer in your house than it is outside. Uh, the disadvantage is uh, when it comes to planting it out, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, so I've got a nice tall jar. Uh, uh, this one had some sort of pasta or curry sauce in it uh, and they were given to me. I've got a whole load of them uh, given to me by a friend. So just pop in some water, make sure uh, that you've only got just a couple of leaves left at the top and then simply stand it in the water. And pop that onto the windowsill. As with so many things there are pros and cons, here are the cuttings I took in June, uh, 21st of June 2018 and they were with softwood cutting so uh, the the stems were still very green and soft and flexible uh, but they've done really well they are a mass um, of roots in there and all I did was have it on the windowsill uh, when I saw the water level had got lower topped it back up uh, just kept an eye on it watched them grow now I started off with a few more than this uh, some of them uh, I've given to friends uh, and very recently uh, I've spotted uh, some real signs of distress in these leaves. This desperately needs to get into some soil now. So taking softwood cuttings uh, on the kitchen windowsill uh, is a great success for me. Uh, it's very easy. We'll see in a few months time uh, how those red currants are doing. The only problem that I find uh, with doing it this way is that uh, you have this mass of roots um, 
which need to go into the soil and you need to get soil con contacting them. And I feel that there's a, a risk that you could damage the roots uh, as you're getting the soil around them. Uh, so they do need uh, extra care when you're potting them up. So there you go, two simple methods uh, to increase your fruit plant stocks uh, just by taking cuttings in a jam jar on your windowsill and out in the garden and as long as they aren't left to completely dry out uh, they should be fine. Just a quick word of precaution, obviously uh, I'm talking about leaving them outside in a temperate climate in the UK. You'll need to make a judgement uh, about the area that you live in, whether they need to be uh, inside in the shade because it's so hot, or in a polytunnel uh, or under glass uh, if you're somewhere very cold. Well that's it for me today, I'm heading back out into the garden uh, to plant those white currant bushes that rooted from last year's cuttings and so wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today I hope it's a good one and I also hope you'll join me again tomorrow.